My name is Zara Simon Ogong. I was born and raised in America, and I moved to Nigeria. Hey Z Stars, what's good in the hood? It's your girl Zara, aka Epic Zara, and today we're going to talk about something that you all have always wanted to talk about. Very American me, moving to very Nigerian Nigeria. Let's just say it's been quite the journey. Now I know you all are always looking for updates and I've been extremely reluctant and that's because it's taken me a very long time to get a bit acclimated. Now I still feel like a foreigner in this country, but I do feel a bit better about being in this environment. I'm very ready to provide content for you. Now this first video is going to be the first of many videos detailing what it is like for someone born and raised in the United States or any Western country really to move to a place like Nigeria and live here full time. Though I haven't been giving very many video updates you guys can follow my chronicles via my instagram and my twitter which will be linked of course now i'm very active on those platforms and a lot of my nigeria journey is there for anybody who's curious but let's get right into this video and this is going to be all about me moving back to get the ball rolling now i'm not entirely sure what we're going to call this series i'm going to put the title right here though you guys have already seen it and of course it's going to be episode one of season one so let's get right into this video but before we do be sure to give this video a big thumbs up be sure to comment down below share this video with all of your friends and your loved ones especially those of them that are moving to nigeria and last but never least subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time i post a new video So I want to give you guys a bit of a backstory because this subject is actually a bit emotional for me and we're going to get into why but you have to watch every bit of this video to understand exactly what's been going on in Nigeria for me. <laughs> My name is Zara Simon Ogong. I was born in Kentucky, USA, and I settled in Maryland by the time I was age eight. My parents actually left to Nigeria at a very young age. My mom was around 15 and my dad was in his early 20s. Both of them spent their formative years in the Western world. My mom actually studied in Italy initially and then went to go and pursue a master's degree at Oxford. And I think she also got a degree from Cambridge. My dad studied at MIT in the US. So both of them are pretty high achieving scholars. Because they left Nigeria at very young ages, my sister and I were raised in a way that is very untraditional. Now interestingly enough, a lot of my peers don't share this experience of having parents who literally left the country at a very young age. Now my parents were also fairly privileged. They did not need to leave the country. They chose to because they wanted to go to school in other places, live in other places. And so the way they raised us reflects that. They were not necessarily extremely strong and we had many conversations with them as far as how we were meant to conduct ourselves. It wasn't like, do this or you die. It was more like, you know, I would advise that you do this. These are the consequences if by chance you decide you don't want to go about things this way. So I appreciate that because I was able to make decisions for myself and I was able to learn very quickly that, wow, these people actually have my best interests at heart. Now I want you guys to internalize that. I'm coming from America, born and raised by parents who are very non-traditional. Now, Following my graduation from high school, at the age of 18, I first visited Nigeria. Now, of course, it was very, very different. It was the first time I had ever been to any country in Africa. Now, that initial visit, I was definitely wearing rose-colored glasses, and it was very romantic in the sense that I didn't feel like I was being judged based on the color of my skin. But don't be deceived. There are many other ways a person in this society can be judged, and the primary one is by class, but we'll get into that. Now, the second time I visited Nigeria was at the age of 22. It was the summer prior to my first year in my master's program and that trip, your girl's eyes were open. Now the first trip I was still quite young so I wasn't really permitted to go anywhere. I just literally went to the mall, ate cold stone and did all of that very normal stuff. I didn't experience the nightlife. By the time I was 22, your girl was meeting people and going places and it was very, very interesting. I was really enjoying myself, especially in Lagos, Nigeria. It was lit. Now following that, I went back home. I completed my first semester of my master's program but I quickly discovered I was extremely burnt out. So during the winter, when we went to visit our parents who had decided they weren't trying to be in the States no more, even though they were extremely successful, we low-key stayed here and we've been here ever since. That sabbatical for my master's program was very, very necessary. In my undergraduate, I studied violin performance and music composition. Now, <laughs> Of course I excelled. I was actually like pretty much at the top of my class and I graduated summa cum laude. I made an impression in the classical music world as a 
composer especially. Now, all of those accolades allowed your girls again to a really pop in master's program in New York City at one of the best schools in the world. Now, I'm glad I took that sabbatical, but I am aching to go back to my country because this country has dealt with me. I want to go home. Now, when I came to this country and decided not to go home, I first chopped life a lot, went out, met a lot of people, hung out with people, even fell in love, and all of the trappings of youth. If you guys want stories on those, let me know down below. And you can also check out a story time I have about this time that I got chased out of the club with a gun. But digression aside, I enjoyed myself and thankfully my parents took care of us and handled our business for us. We weren't wanting for anything. Now I quickly tried to make a name for myself as a violinist because I mean that's what I went to school to do. And composition, I was on a sabbatical. I was not planning on writing music in this environment. So I said, let me make this money with my violin. Now my violin rate is very high in this Buhari era. No shade, uncle. It's very difficult for people to make money in the traditional ways, which would be contracts and fraud. Now he's done a really exceptional job, let's be real, of coming after very corrupt individuals, which means it's really difficult for people to A, get contracts, B, engage in fraudulent activities. And then for people who are not necessarily in the position that I'm in, they're forced to work salaried gigs that may not necessarily pay that well. Now the cost of living in this kind of society is surprisingly exceptionally high. Like literally the minimum wage is what? Something like 18,000? Correct me if I'm wrong, y'all. Let me know in the comments but it's pretty much impossible to enforce it. And even people that are enlightened or exposed will not necessarily pay domestic staff more than 50, 60, 70,000 Naira. Now 36,000 Naira is 100 US dollars. So imagine making a salary of less than $100 a month. That's why this country is still the poverty capital of the world, number one, and number two, a third world country. The percentage of the population that is thriving is very small. And even those that are privileged or in the middle class are not necessarily making a lot of money. Now when it comes to the society, all of these things make it a pretty vicious place to live. There's already not enough money circulating and the people that do have all the money have all the power. And then jobs are difficult to come by in this kind of dry spell. So what do you do? Well, there are a few things that a few people do do. We'll talk about that right now. So when you have a high cost of living with generally low income, a lot of young people are forced to do things that they do not necessarily want to do. A lot of people in general. The society is one of hustle. Lagos especially, you'll find one individual with seven different job titles. I mean, I'm not very different from them. What am I? I'm a violinist, composer, influencer, video editor, photographer. I make graphic art sometimes. And other times I consult with media. So these are all the hats I'm forced to wear as a member of the society. Some other people have to resort to more questionable means. One of the cheapest of them is Yahoo Yahoo. Now what is Yahoo Yahoo? It's basically internet that fraud, financial fraud. This happened to me in Ghana, but we're not fit against that right now. There's also runs, which is a form of prostitution. And of course, there are many different types of runs, girls. If you guys would like a video on that lifestyle, let me know. Though I do not engage in it, I am quite familiar with how that goes. So we could get into some of the crazy stories I've heard, as well as some of the crazy things I've experienced myself because of this rare beauty that I possess. Anyway, digression aside, there's that, which brings us to sugar daddies and again, prostitution entrepreneurial side hustles you'll find a lot of young people starting something and not finishing it or starting those things and doing them as well as maintaining a government job which is technically not legal in this society or another job there are also a number of people who will simply do jobs that they are not even remotely qualified to do because they pay well enough to help them survive. And then you got those very special individuals that will be resorting to all sorts of dark means like witchcraft and juju. And though many of you may not believe in that ish, I'm just letting you know right now, as a young American born Nigerian woman, I've seen plenty of crazy ish, so yeah. Now there are plenty of people who do not want to engage in those things but they're forced to because the society is extremely difficult to live there's no money things are extremely expensive and if you're trying to just hop off and have a good time you could easily spend flipping 36,000 naira which is hundred dollars plus even up to 40 45 50 on a night out and that's without being extravagant and popping bottles at the club which will run you a good million naira plus now you guys have a bit of background on the society I know that a lot of my viewers are American for those of you that are Nigerian corroborate these things for me what are some of your experiences how do you feel about this society 
psychology. Now, because I'm not really a member of this society, people still treat me very strangely. Oftentimes, just relating to people can be really weird. If you guys have seen my video about dating and different types of men, you'll know I spoke of IJGBs, I just got back. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna link that right here in case you don't know what I'm talking about or if you just want the tea on some men in this country. I find myself relating more openly to people like that because they can relate to a lot of my struggles and a lot of the things that they've experienced as members of Western culture are things that we share. Other times though, people often think I'm really stupid because I'm American, so they feel like they can play me or dupe me or certain social graces that I'm so used to as someone of that society are completely ignored. My biggest pet peeve in this environment is how easy it is for people to ignore the fact that I need my personal space. Bruh, like I could literally be standing in line at Cold Stone, which I don't eat anymore because I'm a very good vegan. If you guys want a video about how I've been um, living the vegan life in Nigeria, let me know down below. But at Cold Stone, they'll literally be right behind me, breathing on my neck low key. And I'm like, bro, can't you stand in a line without like touching all up on me? Like my guy, like this is somebody's property. <laughs> Even being vocal in that way, people are confused because they're like, I can brand new, this is not a big deal. But it's something that I simply am not used to. And this is just one example of oh so many. Another thing about this society that's difficult to deal with, especially as someone trying to make a living, is this barter culture. Now, Nigeria is an African country, and in African countries, for centuries, markets have thrived, and even now, there are some really popular markets in Abuja. But in markets, you don't have a fixed price. So that filters into actual concrete business endeavors. My prices are fixed. I don't change my price for anyone and I don't do discounts. But people still come to me and they're like, Oh, I can only afford this much. So what can you give me? Hell no. In this society, if you don't maintain a standard, people will walk all over you. For my clients that keep coming back and keep paying me very well, I'm super grateful to you. But for those clients who are extremely stingy, it's a matter of just learning that they're not trying to pay well and learning that you're going to give them the same quality but not the same quantity. That's how I've managed to survive in this environment and maintain my self-respect as well as my standard as a musician and a businesswoman. My clavicles are on fleek though, <laughs> girls. Anyway, poor guy. <laughs> A lot of my peers readily take certain jobs, but I cannot bring myself to service people who are simply wanting what they can never afford. It's really not by force, find somebody else. So these struggles are just violin, but what about being an influencer in this society? Already brands have like zero respect. I can't tell you people the amount of useless Nigerian brands that will reach out to me and be like, Oh, we want to send you our clothes for free. It's such a privilege to wear our ugly clothes. And we want you to put it on your Instagram page and earn us money, but we're not gonna pay you a single couple because we're a bunch of um yeah that's basically how all the emails go of course your girl's being facetious but it's obnoxious and i'm tired if it's not brands it's other influencers there are so many fake people in this society and women are actually the devil now i made a video about men and a lot of you were in my comments like uh these hate men, what about women? Well, Nigerian women are no better, and I can make a video about that if you guys would like to see it. I got lots of tea, and I don't really have friends in this society because of that. It's hard to trust people in this kind of environment because the conditions are so poor. I can't even blame people for the way they behave so much. It's difficult to have decorum, it's difficult to have a conscience when you're trying to survive. Now I know I make it sound kind of crazy, but I'm actually very privileged. My parents have given me everything, so I'm not looking for anything from anybody, and I can say that. But a lot of people, a lot of young women, a lot of young men feel that they need people to take care of them. So again, I can't really blame them, but the desperation in this kind of environment and the decadence have made it very easy for people my age, especially to be taken advantage of very easily. But then the decadence has also made it extremely easy for greed to just completely destroy this society. Generally, I feel very much alone. My closest friends are in my own country and being in this society, though I've enjoyed myself in a lot of ways, has been difficult. Sometimes I wonder how I've been able to do this for so long, but I know it's only the grace of God, only the strength of my family. But I've made a decision, now that I'm sharing my life in this country with you all, to actually live unapologetically 
live and thrive, not just survive. And you all are going to follow me on that journey to making a name for myself in this country. Yes, I'm going back home. Yes, I'm going back to my own country. But this is also my home. At the end of the day, I'm a Nigerian. I have recognized that in this society, you can really chop life if you know the right people, if you work hard enough, if you make the right connections. And I'm very prepared to do that. So I want you guys to come along with me. We're going to explore everything that Nigeria has to offer because as difficult as this society is, there's so much potential and it's so beautiful. I don't want to discourage anyone from actually living here and moving to this environment. If you want to know what you're getting yourself into, recognize that you need money to live a beautiful life here. And most endeavors require you to have large sums of cash. For instance, buying a house, it's not just mortgage, oh, you have to pay outright cash most times. But also know this, that though it can be difficult here for people like us, it can also be extremely beautiful. I've had plenty of beautiful experiences, and if you guys want to know about them, I'm definitely willing to share them with you. I haven't written this country off because it's the country of my forefathers. It's the country of my parents. Though I was not born here, it is my country. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you want to see all of these chronicles unfold, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's where I am like all the time. If you'd like more videos about my Nigeria Chronicles, you're getting them whether you want them or not because you guys have been asking and I'm finally delivering. So season one, episode one. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know if you can relate. Let me know what you think about this society. Be sure to share this video with anybody else who's moving to Nigeria. Be sure to share this video with anyone who has opinions about our country. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up so that I know that you enjoyed it and I'll be sure to make more. And last but never least, subscribe to my channel so you know every time I post a new video. Welcome to my life in Nigeria.